still wearing the gloves, still wearing the lab coat. What you always note is, you'll note that if you're really if you're really observing, you'll note that the exact point where the acid starts to hit the water, hit, starts to hit the solution, around there will become cold. That's why the rest remains pink. And then when you swirl it around, that's when you see the complete color change. Occasionally, sometimes you'll see it become colorless around the area and pink all the way around. When you swirl it around, everything becomes pink. So it hasn't completely finished. And it makes sense because the acid that's neutralizing. It's only going to neutralize in the area where it falls. It needs time to then move around. So swirling it around helps to move it around. Okay. Now you can probably start to see it's become a much lighter shade. Okay? Still has a bit to go, but it is lighter for sure. Exactly 16 point, actually it's exactly 16 milliliters on my count. Okay, so you're going to record that as your next one. Write that down as your second measurement. We're going to need three of these so that we can then take an average. Alright, now the reason we take an average is you can see I'm getting progressively more accurate. If I do it an infinite number of times, eventually I'd be so accurate by the end of it that all, almost all of them would be exactly the same. So by taking an average, I can actually account for the dodgy ones that have familiar earlier on. Okay, we use up, we're up to 43.2. We expect 0.3 more mils. Let's have a look. Much, much fainter pink. Let's work out the concentration of our sodium hydroxide. It's going to be a mole calculation, kind of stoichiometry. So in these things, I've always told you guys, what's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you need? Edmund's got a banana. Chemical equation. Chemical equation, all right? Do not forget your chemical equation. We have our average title. 
So let's do our moles of oxalic acid. How many moles of oxalic acid did we add in? Okay, so we know our concentration was 0 0.04, right? We got the concentration, what's the volume? What was the volume of oxalic acid that we added in? That's coming from our titration, right? That's this part, our average height. We added in 15.93 milliliters. Make sure you count for milliliters. 7.6 times 10 to the minus 3, minus 4, mole. Okay? Um, and there's some other numbers in there. I'm not going to worry about the other numbers. It's stored on my calculator. That'll be okay. Moles of oxalic acid. Now, what's our mole ratio? Okay, our mole ratio of oxalic acid to sodium hydroxide is 1 to 2. So therefore we can say, multiply by 2, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of NaOH neutralized. That's how many moles we had in our reaction, that's how many we neutralized. Okay? So, therefore, concentrate. Now we know the concentration equals moles divided by volume. We know our concentrate, we know our moles, which is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. The volume of NaOH that we neutralize every time, 20 mils. Now we're going to worry about significant figures. Uh, so I'll ask you guys. Amongst our measurements, how many significant figures do we take for our titration measurements? How many? Four? That's right. What about for our pipette? You know, pipettes can measure exactly 20 mils. So we'd actually say 20.0, three significant figures. We know it's exactly 20 mils that we get. Okay, uh, I'm going to make a bit of a judgment here. You could say, but I can't be sure. I might be off by a little bit. So you might want to say 20 mils as opposed to 20.0 and stick to two significant figures. We might be off in the 0.0. Um, now, I'm not too worried about that because I do know there's one thing that's going to be more important. The last thing we measured was our mass. How many significant figures did that do? Two. So out of those options, the least number of significant figures is 2. So we want to give on our minus of 2 significant figures. 0 0.07 